about this one and then go maybe to something about the music yeah. um, um, uh, from the book, you mm -hmm. know. Um, one thing I recognize in the book, um, okay, let's see, look at me here and have a hop of fudge. <laughs> yeah, okay. One thing that really touched me um, is that you told me that we would be able to hear music from period music, p music possibly that has to do with Moses' life and his. Can you tell me a little more about that music? Well, we, it took a while to decide what kind of music to use. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't quite know how much you would really want to hear in the background, and I wasn't real sure. Uh, we thought of using uh, uh, some various music, and then in the process uh, this past month, we realized that the best was just the Sun Thomas music. Sun Thomas was uh, one of the folk artists that was at the uh, Corcoran exhibit in Washington in the early 80s when Mose and I went there and he no longer is alive and he uh, played with Robert Johnson he learned how to play with one wire uh, strung on the uh, side of his house and he is known for being a musician and for being a folk artist uh, he made clay skulls and coffins and um, life-size coffins and put clay figures inside of them mm. and so his music um, a lot of it was recorded. He traveled in Europe, uh, more popular in Europe than he was in America. Mm -hmm. And of course he played in Leland for his friends and clubs over and over again over the years. And But traveled uh, to France and Germany and, and a lot of times they would record his music over there and it would never get to an actual recorded record album mm -hmm. but just be rough clips. So I went through all the rough clips and some of the actual uh, recordings uh, to choose the music that that would go well with this and it seemed to be perfect yeah well did they know each other they met each other in Washington there was a social gathering room in the Corcoran uh, uh, the hotel that we stayed at near the Corcoran and so on the floor that we uh, had rooms they all of the folk artists had their own individual room and there was a social gathering room where they could drink and smoke cigarettes and watch television and so the folk artists met each other Sam Doyle was introduced to son Thomas and Mose Tolliver and they'd never met each other before and they were all some of the best greatest uh, folk artists of the South mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, they uh, had a good time together, you know, and um, son Thomas drank more than he should have back then, and so he was really having a great time with some 150 proof rum. <laughs> I think it's amazing that this is something that you've been doing most of your life. I mean, you had a gallery, um, a folk art gallery. Is it still operating? I have two galleries and both of them are closed because I spend most of my time in Mexico. They're, they're just uh, not traditional galleries. They never were. They were where I stored a lot of my own folk art and my own art and it was always my art studio at the same time. So that when I go away, um, I just close it up and then I open it again when I come home. And then if someone happens to find me there, then they buy some art. And um, I don't have regular openings or anything regular, really. So when I go back to New Orleans again this summer, I'll probably open it for a day, for a month or two. And all the artwork is still up there. Um, so yes, I have two galleries, but they're usually just sort of closed unless I decide to open them. Well, I'm interested to know um, when this book is going to come out and how people can, can order it. Well, I have to, uh, we're hoping that it would be out in the summer. Um, my uh, most Oliver, Next year? This summer, we were hoping. Uh, when I made my most Oliver paperback, my paper book, hardbound book, I thought it was going to be out every year and I would send out newsletters and I would say hot off the press the Mo's book is going to finally be up and running at the end of the summer buy your copy now and and so many people bought copies and then year you know several years would pass and the people would call me up from New York and they would say excuse me you know I bought this book three years ago and are you some kind of uh, charlatan that's stolen our money and then whenever they uh, her, got to talk to me and realized how I was so sincere and I 
wished it was out too. They always were so patient and, and no one ever really, they always would, always would say, oh, don't you worry about a thing, and their demeanor would change over in a second. And um, so I hope that's not going to happen with this iPad book, but it, it looks like that this one is going to be out in the summer or in the fall. Um, and then I'm hoping to enter it in some competitions. There are not many uh, iPad books that are out um, about artists or musicians. They're mainly like, at this point, it's relatively new. So um, there are children's books, a lot of children's books, but not informative books about people, and especially with all of the uh, audio and video clips that I've mm -hmm. put on it, I think you really get the sensation that you've actually met Mose yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't, if you have met him in the past, then it's like you get to visit him again. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm sure that um, Mose would be so proud of this too, and it's a great accomplishment really in this age of um, being able to navigate into an, a more profound understanding of the material. Yeah, I think it, it could be great for, you know, schools and for children um, because you don't get bored reading all the pages. You've got something to do on every page. And um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that people will, will enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed putting it together.